Okay, we're working on a transfer case. 246, new process. This came out of a 1500 Chevy Silverado. I want to say around 2001 era. Okay, our goal today is to talk about four wheel drive and auto four wheel drive and what allows it all to happen. This is the multi plate clutch disc that enables. If this one gets applied so far, then we're in auto four wheel drive. If it gets a lot of pressure applied to it and the clutch is in here, we're locked up into four wheel drive mode instead of auto. Now, part of the auto feature, or I should say the auto operation of four wheel drive mode, we have a speed sensor. This is the vehicle speed sensor, but the speed sensor for the shaft looks at the output shaft speed. Of course, this goes to the drive line to the rear wheels. We have another sensor up here. And this one here you can actually see the toothed wheel inside. Inside there. Okay. So if one differential has a wheel that slips, then either this drive shaft or this shaft that goes to the other drive shaft will slip a little. One will spin faster than the other. Therefore, inside here, we have the shift fork. This fork puts pressure onto this center hub right here. And it's going to put more pressure on to engage four-wheel drive. That would be auto four-wheel drive mode. But if we're in four-wheel drive mode, then this fork is going to put pressure on in a steady fashion. For example, go ahead and put the wrench on that fitting. I'm going to show him. I'm going to show you where he's putting that wrench. Go ahead and take it off for a moment. This is where the encoder motor, the electric motor, goes on, and we're going to put a wrench on to simulate what the motor does. Okay, and so as you can hopefully see, it moves this fork back and forth. Okay, go ahead and go the other way now. Okay, there we go. So, based upon where this is, we could be in two-wheel drive mode, we could be in an auto four-wheel drive mode, and if we need to ramp it up more to the motor wheel, if we're in four-wheel drive, it comes out even further to fully engage this clutch. So let's go ahead and look inside the clutch. This multi-disc clutch. Doing fine. You know, hold this. Okay, get the splines lined up, I guess. I can edit this stuff out. Okay. Don't worry. Just go ahead and take the discs off from there. Yep. Yep, you got a friction disc and a steel. And these steels are splined to the hub where these frictions have their own teeth for the inside. Oop. For the inside hub. Go ahead and pull a few more off. And you can see there are several discs. Friction steel, another friction, and again the more we put pressure on the center hub to push against this clutch pack, we can allow these discs to have some slip, which might be an auto four-wheel drive mode, because if we don't allow some slip here, like in an all-wheel drive slash a auto four-wheel drive mode, which is much the same thing, then we'll have some drive line bind up. You know how the steering wheel jerks back and forth and you turn sharp in four-wheel drive? Well, the reason it doesn't happen in all-wheel drive, or, or again, auto four-wheel drive, because these discs are able to slip, allowing this gear, this drive gear, and here is the driven gear for the 
front drive line. Okay. This allows these two drive shafts to turn at different speeds. But in four-wheel drive mode, sensors really aren't going to have any more uh, purpose because we put so much pressure on the center hub to engage these plates that no slip will be allowed to occur. And so it would be in four-wheel drive mode. And that's the difference between four-wheel drive mode and auto four-wheel drive, which really is all-wheel drive is this multi-disc clutch and how this fork applies pressure based on what the electric motor in the back there would do. Thank you.